knife do? More soup. Come and get your figs. What's up, fuckers? Your boy's back with a fresh batch of dope. Knife dope. That's right, people. The hits don't stop. Been contemplating a couple of things as far as the uh, upcoming Manix 2 build-off that is set to take place sometime here towards the end of May. We have not come up with the actual competition date yet, but shit is heating up behind the scenes. A lot of shit talk between me and the boys. This is just a um, just a quick reminder to the competition out there of just how strong my mod game is. This was actually um, OG Goat's first release of their clamshell construction aluminum scales for the G10 version of the Manix 2. I um, absolutely love these scales. I decided to go on this one with the um, thing they call this, I forget what type of pattern they call it, but I ended up getting mine uh, black Cerakoted. Uh, this version here is actually the River's Edge Cutlery Exclusive. So I think that black looks really good um, right there in contrast against that FDE color. Um, so yeah, fantastic job by Original Goat. As a matter of fact, they ended up coming up with some lightweight scales for a lightweight version of the Manix 2. Now, currently I've got two builds going on behind the scenes because I can't make up my goddamn mind. So I'm even contemplating perhaps um, once I've made that mind up, showing you guys the uh the version that i didn't go with but if these scales speak to you you can go ahead and get yourself a set as well just head on over to originalgoat.com and treat yourself just be sure to use code fucker for 15 percent of your purchase okay people the shilling has stopped let's get to the dope all right we got one today that just touched down this is coming from nc blade um this was actually not expected to uh, or i wasn't expecting it to be delivered until later this week i think friday was the original date um, but it showed up early so whenever that happens i ain't mad at it now it seems like i've been getting quite a few things recently from nc blade and um here goes the standard insert on the box family man i don't remember i think his name is brandon if i remember correctly uh, but they always give us a nice little um, little thing of candy. And then they always give us some stickers. Because they know I'm a sticker hoe. So it says it's a matter of knife or death. And then we've got this one. Do y'all know what the fuck that is? CKF, baby. That's right. We've got another CKF addition to the collection. And then they always give us some type of joke. Right? Yeah. They always give you a joke and a scratch off. I've never won on the scratch offs. So let's see what this joke says. All right, what does Jeff Bezos do before bed? He puts his pajamas on. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, yeah, man, hopefully I win one goddamn day, you know? I don't, um, as a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever heard anybody that's uh, actually won on that scratch-off. I don't even know if it's um, if it's a real game or not. Uh, but anyways, I digress. CKF is back in the building. Now, for those of you who might not know, CKF is a Russian entity. Uh, and for, you know, for, for a couple of years, people actually thought that, you know, being that it's a Russian entity, you that, you know, and being that the knives act, actually ship from Moscow, uh, you would assume that they are, you know, Russian made. But at some point, I think in 2022, maybe 2023, um, I think 2022, people somewhere, I think they finally admitted to the fact that they were getting the, the knives uh, made in China by an undisclosed OEM, and then they would be assembled in Moscow. Um, so that's similar to that whole, you know, made in the USA type of gig where people assemble a knife here and then claim it's made in the USA. I think they shouldn't be able to do that. They should have to tell you it's assembled in uh, said country of origin. But that's not what's important. Let's get to this one. Now, these, uh, these always arrive in this high-quality, well-insulated and well-cushioned taco pouch. We've got an extra pack of hardware. The COA, which we'll go over here in a moment. Put that to the side. And then we've got the knife. Now, I've handled a couple of uh, knives from CKF. 
I've got one in the collection, which was actually my knife of the year last year, which was the Mini Justice. And this one actually caught my eye last year, but it was sold out by the time I ever uh, contemplated buying it. And this is the Gnome. <laughs> oh, shit. It's in my possession, people. Look at that. Uh, look at those milling lines. It just looks so good with this nicely dark stone washed titanium handles. Uh, here goes the little COA. So it is the Gnome, the Danila Matacek design. And uh, number 322. All right. Now we've got single form of deployment on this thing, which is a uh, nicely low profile front flipper. But I've got a vision for this knife, and we'll go over that momentarily. We've got a gorgeous Zirkutai pocket clip, which is right hand tip up. Zirconium backspacer with a hidden lanyard post for those weirdos. Slight contour uh, to these scales. Nicely done copper pivot collars on both sides of the knife we've got the ckf branding here on the show side of the handle and then we've got the maker's mark right there on the uh on the lock side let's check this hoe out Woo! d10 is dialed the fuck in now these come in at 510 dollars, and that is probably some of the uh cheaper knives you get from ckf and even though that's the case, man, a lot of people claim that this one just might be the best, uh, the best knife in their catalog. And my early, um, my early thoughts on that is they might be right. We've got 7.8 inches as far as overall length. 3.5 inches of that is in this fantastic clip point apparatus. Bowler M390 is the steel. We've got a two-tone finish. So we've got a nice blasted finish on your main portion. We've got a hand rub satin finish on the flats. Looks good. Sterile presentation for the most part. So totally sterile on that show side of the blade. And then we've got the steel there on the bottom portion along with the, uh, the serial numbered. Now there is a ton of weight reduction milling on these handles. And it actually feels pretty light considering the, uh, the overall size. Plenty of real estate. So you can definitely accommodate the full purchase. No refund. We've got a high flat grind with 138 thousandths for blade stock thickness. Add all that up and what do you get? She's a slicey hoe. I digging it. I am digging it, digging it, digging it. Now back to my vision, okay? I can see a nice robust set of Zerkutai tits on this thing. What do y'all think? I think that would be a game changer. Gotta have a second form of deployment if at all possible. And I think uh, this is definitely possible. 4.09 ounces is the weight on this thing. Now let's go ahead and put a couple of knives up for some size comparison. Basically, a little bit of knife flexing. You know how the fuck we do. Gotta roll with America first. We're gonna start out like this. The McNeese Mac 2, 3.5 rendition. More American dope for your palate. We're gonna go with the Hinderer Eclipse. One of one, baby, as it's been heavily modded. So the gnome is actually a little bit bigger than the uh, than the McNeese and a little bit smaller than that uh, than that hinderer. Let's do a couple more, shall we? How about a grill knife? We're gonna go with the Spiderco Python, baby. Then we're gonna go with the uh, Native Five, rocking those fantastic AWT scales. So the gnome is bigger than the native five and a little bit smaller than that Paisan. Let's do two mo. God damn it, two mo. Let's go with the Mordax, which I did have a, a nice set of tits put on that. Last but certainly not least, gotta have a Demko. We're gonna go with Big Mama, otherwise known as that AD20. And so the gnome is smaller than both of these. Yep, I will tell you. Regardless of where this knife is manufactured, it is a uh, very, very impressive, impressive specimen. Tolerances, attention to detail, fit and finish. Now the D10 is a little bit, um, it's a little bit lighter. I mean, I, I wouldn't say, I mean, it's lighter than I like, but it's not lighter at a, uh, you know, as at a deficit. But that's because they're only giving you one form of deployment, which is that front flipper. Uh, so to uh, to compensate for that, they decided to uh, 
lighten up that D10 a little bit. Ceramic cage bearings it is riding on. We're looking at about 40% on lockup, maybe even 50. Yep, I'm impressed, man. It is very, very smooth, man. Oh, it just feels great in the hand. I'm digging it. Yep, yep, yep. Especially the way that Zerku tie hits. But more importantly, I want to know what you fuckers think. Tell me all about it. Love you, mean it. Until the next time. Cut something. Cut someone. Just don't cut yourself. Stay dangerous, fuckers!